What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of the AI Timeline where I covered the coolest AI developments in the past week. The hottest news this week is definitely ChatGPT's new function, Code Interpreter, that just went out of private beta. If you have not heard of it, it is basically a coding plugin where it lets you upload pretty much anything and can generate codes, read your codes, and fix your codes. You can only upload one file at a time, but you can zip multiple files together and upload them as a single file. It has the upload size limit of 512 megabytes, which is plenty if you're just uploading codes. I think it's also run on a Jupyter Notebook instance, so environment-wise, you can just treat it like one. What I observed from other people's results so far is that Code Interpreter doesn't give up easily. When it fails a task, it will retry for quite a few times. Like in this example from Fireship, he showed that Code Interpreter failed making the correct regits for two times but passed on the third try. This is definitely very useful to generate unit tests, create code documentations, implement a specific change, or even refactoring. This guy even made a working Flappy Bird using Code Interpreter in just 7 minutes. Even though the graphics do look a bit wonky, it made development so much easier and faster. The author also documented the progress so you can check it out. The second hottest news is definitely SDXL. Following the news of its leaked 0.9 models last week, it is now officially available for people to download on Hugging Face. If you have not heard of SDXL, it is basically this new model stability AI has published for free which aims to generate realistic images like Mid Journey. It contains it a base model and a refiner where now the architecture can be split into something like this. So the refiner basically is a dedicated model to upscale or improve anything that the base model generates and the difference between quality with and without using the refiner is huge. You can now run the models on Confi UI and it will soon be available on automatic. What's even better is that people have already made Loha, which is another type of Lora, to learn anime style with only 100 images. The quality is incredibly good too. If you look from afar, you definitely can't tell it's AI generated right away. And for contrast, a stable diffusion 1.5 needs around 5,000 images to learn a style and it sometimes still cannot copy the style properly. A new generation of AI images and models will soon be upon us. The author of this post also shared their workflow on how they trained the Loha, you can check it out. Another person also made SDXL 0.9 tests on anime figures, and it's something that is pretty hard for SD 1.5 to do without any fine tuning. But just look at them, the textures and the lighting are are just so on point. On the other hand, SDXL 1.0 is released for testing on their official Discord bot with several models, samplers, and different parameters available. The results people got from it are incredible. And again, these are just base models. The amount of impressive work that can branch off this is just unimaginable. Apparently, SDXL 1.0 is planned to be released in a week, so that's why they're choosing their release candidate with the Discord bots. Pretty exciting stuff. Last on the headline, we have Anime Diff. A Research dedicated to anime AI generated images and it's actually mind blowing. This is not the classic interpolation between images or text to video. This is a completely novel method whereby inserting a motion module in the diffusion models, it can then generate temporal coherent images based on the text to form an animation. The best part about this is that it will work with any existing fine tuned or dream booth text to image models. The official demo has tested it on popular custom fine tuned models such as TuneU, Counterfeit realistic vision, magic mix, and so much more. Oh my god, this is so sick. It was literally my first reaction when I saw the results. The AI art people really are eating good this month. Animated wallpapers or profile pics from your favorite AI generated images, or probably just normal image, is now possible too. I also wonder how this will impact the entire text to video development because simply building on top of pre-existing models definitely has a larger appeal as there is a super large library of them with extremely high quality right now. On a quick tangent but a slightly similar research, Pika Labs also has released an image conditioned video generation where you can animate an image using a prompt. Their official demo looks very impressive too, especially how the wind is blowing her hair. Some people have tested it on their own images and you can DM them on Twitter for early access. Next up, we have our weekly dose of LLM news. This week, we have a few language model papers that reflect perfectly about last week's papers. But if you're not into LLM and not scared of FOMO, feel free to skip this segment using the chapter function. After last week's 1 billion token paper, LongNet, there was a lot of discussion about how efficient it really is at retrieving information. Because the context length of a thousand Bibles is really 
really absurd. Coincidentally, there is this new research paper that came out called Lost in the Middle, which discusses about the length of the input context with respect to its performance. This research basically concluded how language model performance is the highest when the relevant information occurs at the very start or the very end of a long input context. That may be because the performance degrades significantly when the information is somewhere in the middle. This was tested by having the language model answer questions where the question related information was only located in a single document and mix that document with some other irrelevant documents. By manually changing the locations of the question relevant document in the input context, the performance actually changes and the effect increases as the irrelevant documents increase too. Models like GPT 3.5, Claude, MPT, Long Chat all show similar results. And this phenomenon perfectly captures the title of this paper, Lost in the Middle. Next, we have secrets of RLHF in large language models. And this is the part one called proximal policy optimization. For those who don't know what RLHF is, it is basically a fine-tuned method for LLMs, which stands for reinforcement learning from human feedback. As its name suggests, it is basically having humans providing feedback to the LLM, like if the results are good or bad, accurate or inaccurate. It is an important process, not just because it can prevent LLM from saying dumb or harmful stuff, but also also to provide information that is relevant or aligns quickly with the user's intentions. In this paper, they discuss the PPO, short for Proximal Policy Optimization, which is used as the reward model to measure the model performance. And the difficulty lies in that first, the performance is hard to measure because you are trying to evaluate words with correctness using numbers. And second, the trial and error cost is extremely expensive since these models are often gigantic. So this makes the reward design environment interaction and agent training, something researchers are extremely cautious about. And in this paper, they propose a new reward function called PPO Max for RLHF, and it's able to more effectively help LLMs to understand deeper meanings in a query and respond more accurately to the user. The English examples on the paper are kind of underwhelming, but the Chinese ones capture the sentiment of understanding deeper meanings a lot more. In this example, the human prompt was saying they lost their dog. The SFT, which which is basically without RLHF, did the classic move as an AI assistant and started listing a lot of ways to find your dog like an automated robot. However, by using the PPO max they proposed into the RLHF, not only did it try to sympathize with the user, comfort the user by telling them to stay calm, but also chose not to generate a list of instructions to sound like a cold-hearted robot, which might be a sign of improved alignment and knows how to read the atmosphere. This would definitely make jailbreak a lot harder too. They also criticize the lack of open source LLM and RLHF research, which makes the improvements for this field a lot slower, which also reminds me of how ironic big companies are calling and crying about AI alignment while not providing people anything to work on. They are also planning to go deeper in this research, so a part two paper is coming out. Which also brings us to the next paper, Becoming Self-Instruct, Introducing Early Stopping Criteria for Minimal Instruct Tuning. This paper proposed a new metric called Instruction following score that detects language models ability to follow instructions. It can not only distinguish between the base and instruct models, but can also be used as an early stopping criteria in the training process. So this can save both time and money. And from the previous paper that we just discussed where it's hard to figure out how well the model actually performs after RLHF, IFS is then able to be used to evaluate RLHF models. It's kind of funny how these research papers probably have no relation to each other yet answer each other's questions a few days apart. Next, we have this paper called a survey on evaluation of large language models, which acts as a compass or an overview for LLMs. If you are a new researcher and want to learn about LLM, then in this paper, you will find all the latest and the most distilled insight on what to evaluate, where to evaluate, and how to evaluate LLMs. This paper highlights the extreme importance in LLM evaluation and how it is an essential discipline in developing them. We are probably all familiar with the concept concept that when small but high quality data is used to train a language model, it can perform extremely well in that specific domain. 
This week, we have teaching arithmetic to small transformers, and in this paper, it mentioned that good formatting can improve the output accuracy for basic arithmetics like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. With the addition of training train of thought style data, it can improve the model's accuracy and speed. They showed that the simpler the data format, the less data it needs to be trained to reach a certain accuracy. Here is the difference in plain data formatting versus simplified scratchpad formatting, and the plain formatting requires 8 times less data. To be completely honest, these results are pretty much expected, but it can also suggest teaching or explaining math step by step by an AI can be a lot harder to train. More data are needed, especially learning for the in-between steps, in order for the AI to accurately explain them. On the non-research paper side of the LLM news, we have a new open source wizard LM model that was released a few days ago and it beat ChatGPT on the Alpaca eval leaderboard. And if you guys still remember Otter from a few episodes ago, which is the demo that is like an AR POV with an otter chatbot that you can get help from has open sourced their models and also topped the open source multimodal LLM leaderboard. It overtook mini GPT-4 and instruct blip by a decent margin too. On the other hand, Anthropic announced their beta 100k token model called Cloud2 that is now available on their website. They claim that Cloud2 scored 71.2% on human eval, which in contrast beats zero shot GPT-4 back when it just came out. And on their official evaluation, they claim that it can score 76.5 on the bar exam around 65 for a US MLE medical exam and scored in the top percentiles on the GRE general test for verbal reasoning and analytical writing. It failed miserably on the quant reasoning though. So yeah, that's all for this segment of LLM news and here is the rest of the news, free for all, rapid fire. Elon Musk has announced the official launch of XAI, which is a new AI company he made after Sen Omen's rejection when he tried to get back into OpenAI. We don't really know for now what exactly XAI will be working on, but they are hosting a Q&A on a Twitter space this Friday, July 14th. They didn't announce the exact time, but you can follow their Twitter for more details. On the first look, they have a lot of great talents on their team with Dan Hendricks, the director of the Center of AI Safety, as the advisor. They also made a reference for their announcement day, which aligns with their vision statement, I guess. Next up, we have a paper called Sketch a Shape, a zero-shot sketch to 3D shape generation research that is capable of generating 3D models from sketch, diagram, or or doodles. Since there are barely any existing good data pairs for sketch and 3D models, this research instead uses the semantic signals within normal vision models and generalizes the abstract idea then combines it with the input sketches to convert it into a 3D shape. It's a very interesting workaround experiment and the 3D shape seems to be able to stay pretty consistent if it's a common object. Compared to older research, I think by having it being blocky helps a lot for the result to stay consistent, but it definitely is a big step up to too. Next, we have this really interesting research called Self-Consuming Generative Models Go Mad. In this paper, they experimented training images with generated data. With the most notable experiment, using results from StyleGen2 and train another model using generated results, and rinse and repeat. The outcome was that the artifacts would be progressively amplified in each new generation, and in some cases, the generation result would converge to roughly the same phase. With both the quality and the diversity decreases, they named this condition model autophagy disorder, aka MAD. As future models will likely be trained on some mixture of real and synthetic data, accidentally forming an autophagous, aka self-consuming loop, this paper is trying to explore how doomed we are because now the internet is no longer easy to scrape a big amount of real image data at once since we got AI images floating literally everywhere. And just imagine when us humans can even decipher what is generated and what is real. That is definitely going to give an interesting twist for digital digital medias. When converting images into tokens, isn't it sometimes kind of redundant to tokenize a huge chunk of the sky or the grass into tiny repeated tokens? Here's MSVIT, short for Multi-Scale Vision Transformers. This research aims to tackle this problem of wasting spaces or tokens on image regions that are repetitive or carry little to no meaning. MSVIT basically selects the optimal token scale for every image region and performs token reduction on those parts. For instance, image regions that are not as complex will be prevented being sliced into even smaller pieces. It was able to achieve this by incorporating semantic meaning into the image regions, and as a result, MSVIT has some decent improvements in the accuracy complexity trade-off. 
Next up, Carbon Robotics have this futuristic cyberpunk looking laser weeder. It went viral on Twitter this week and some people think that it kills pests with it, which in fact it doesn't, it's just laser weeds. So the community node saves the dystopian future where we would efficiently laser beam inferior species, no I mean prevent false information once again. And before we end this video, here is a bonus segment of AI image or video processing result fest. This video is a fake time lapse made with Photoshop generative fill. It looks really real probably thanks to how fast the images are changing and this seems like an incredible time consuming project too. Saving each frame then changing the masks, however the result makes it look totally worth it. Remember the guy that used the towel to turn themselves into a girl with realistic hairs? Now he has changed the towel into an actual wig to test out how real the result can be. If you look closely at the hands, they would go through the hair strands without bugging out too much. This can either mean the hairs are not being recolored or or it can cleanly cut off at the hands. Maybe a test for recoloring the wig to some brighter color can help. And not to mention, the skin on the hands are surprisingly white too. Damn, these SD whatever AI filters are improving so fast. Let's end today's video with some pretty cool QR code art, where it is almost seamless with the actual image content. Some people did criticize that the QR code barely works, but seeing people being creative about this is pretty fascinating. On the topic of creative, today's sponsor Image Creator is here to help you out on your creative journey in Photoshop. Image Creator is a free Photoshop plugin that provides you a nicer workflow between Photoshop and Diffusion-based AI image generation. In this plugin, there are currently 20 available models for you to try out within a few clicks, ranging from Photogen, Counterfeit, Deliberate, and much more. In their text-to-image, you just need to simply type in your prompt, choose your parameters, select an area, and press generate to get an image layer directly onto Photoshop. You can also incorporate ControlNet into your generation by clicking onto the ControlNet drop-down, process, upload, and choose the image you want to be pre-processed for generation. The same goes to image to image where you can select your current existing image, enter a prompt, and it'll generate a new layer that transforms your original image. They also provide stable diffusion based generative fill where you just have to erase or select your layer, prompt it, and it'll fill the space that you choose. Pretty neat. So check out Image Creator with a link down in the description and thank you Image Creator for sponsoring this video. A big shout out to Andrew Laschelias, Chris Ledoux, Alex Shea, Alex Maurice, Deegan, Migilim, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.